fear is letting people down. Okay, now we're talking. It is a lot of pressure. The more success you get, the more pressure builds because people expect you to do more and more. Our guest today is Imranur Rahman, pride of Bangladesh and Sheffield. Numerous accolades under his belt. Luck start position is... What's going through your mind? You have to stay calm. Even an empty mind, sometimes something might creep in. <laughs> As a sportsman, I feel like I need to put the country on the map. Show to the world, Bangladesh can do a lot in sports. But why do you care so much when the country itself doesn't care about itself so much? It's, uh, I, it's, uh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> it's, um, Meeting of the Prime Minister of Bangladesh as a result of your amazing, amazing achievement, your wife met the Prime Minister. Was she aware that she was Pakistani? Brother Imranur Rahman, thank you so much for coming to Side by Side podcast. Um, I know we've been in conversation for a very long time and I have first come across um, yourself when you, I think, recent. I don't know when it was, about probably a year ago, you won something for, for Bangladesh as a, as a country from, your, uh, from one of the competitions. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Um, appreciate you having me on uh, this uh, podcast. And uh, it was the Asian Indoor Championship at the time. Uh, got, recent, got that success from there. And uh, since then, everything's been building up and uh, I've been moving forward, alhamdulillah. Amazing, amazing, mashallah. Once again, um, thank you for accommodating us. I know um, you were training just before you got to the studio. And I'm sure we'll, we'll talk a lot more <laughs> about your regime and disciplines around training. But let me begin by asking you, I suppose you can, we can call it a tough question. Yeah. Um, what is your greatest fear? Greatest fear? Um, of course, it's religiously... Displeasing Allah is the, my greatest fear. We as Muslims, we want to do our best and live in accordance with Islam. So, the hellfire, etc., that's something we all want to uh, like try to miss or if we can. Mm -hmm. So, that's my greatest fear. Uh, and if it was a life fear uh, in this world, what would it be? Uh, I'd say... Uh, just, you know, losing my family, losing my friends, not having that relationship with them. Uh, that would be something would, that would stress me out and would probably put me in a down, downward spiral. Um, so I want to keep sure I keep like a good relationship with everyone I know, keep it nice and mutual and like that, yeah. So I, I guess for, for, from what I understand is you value friendship and connections and relationship and that probably is that the highest spot in your kind of list of priorities in life. I've got different goals. Uh, everyone wants to keep good relationships with family and friends, but I'm a sports person. I do athletics. My fear is letting people down. Okay, now we're talking. This is so. Ultimately, this is your fear. Like you don't want to let people down. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people rooting for you, backing you. They have high hopes on you. Yeah. And that's a tremendous pressure, isn't it? It is. It is a lot of pressure. And uh, the more success you get, the more pressure builds because people expect you to do more and more in the next event or the next championship. I try to manage myself uh, as best as I can with my family, with my friends, my coaches and everyone around me. They uh, obviously say to me, um, you've done well in the past. Use them experiences to move forward. And don't be worried about what people think. I always see it like this, like it's myself against myself. If I can achieve what to my potential, and I'm, I'm sure the results and the performances would be out there in my sport. Amazing. Now you've done impressive things in athletics. When you meet someone, how do you introduce yourself? What do you say, who you are, what do you do? I don't really introduce myself. Uh, I'm an athlete or I'm a sprinter. I, I like when they get to know me, they'll find out what my hobbies are, what my interests are, what I do for a living. I just try to be as genuine as possible. Come across like 
just myself like so what's your introduction though like you know imagine you met the say a prime minister of a country they don't know who you are what you do what do you say about yourself it depends well like uh, the prime minister of bangladesh does know me uh, room for bangladesh yeah. of bangladesh uh, after the achievement uh, in the asian indo championship mm-hmm. uh, a lot of rec- recognition came then now imagine someone didn't know who you are uh. your accolades you know nobody you're in a nobody you're you're in greenland yeah and someone asked imran what do you do who are you i'd say i'm just a no, uh, family person i like athletics i like sports okay i like to hang around with friends i try to compete seriously mhm um depends i don't want to come across like big headed or you're either. very humble i mean i'm trying to get to get <laughs> i don't know no, i i uh, once like um i get to know the person i'll tell them or oh, this is what i've done for a living um and athletics achieve achieve this and that i'm trying to go to major mm-hmm. events like world championships uh, olympic games etc mm-hmm. they're my focal points and i want to do well for my country i want to win medals and cha- uh, championships that's what i want to do what's your country bangladesh <laughs> <laughs> i like it i like it now do you have any other jobs yeah um i'm an accountant at the same time really so yeah so i have to keep a good I was I was going to say work life but work sport and life. So, wow, yeah. so um mashallah like accountant by day and um you got um athletics on this. You're very productive mashallah. I try to be. It's it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Um time management I guess. Um I got flex flex hours at work so if I'm doing track and uh gym. Mm-hmm. Hit track in the morning. Then go to work. after work i'll go to the gym so four or five times a week i'll have like a double session where it's track and gym i am um, wow and then f- family of course <laughs> wow so were you born in sheffield yeah i was born in sheffield uh, what was it like uh, growing up in sheffield when was it when was when were you born i was born in 1993 wow mashallah very young <laughs> uh, yeah so um just like not like It was a normal childhood, I'd say, from what I know. Um lived with my family, my grandma, uh stayed with my grandma as well for a lot of time. Uh she's my next door neighbor. Um schooling just down the road. After school went to mosque, after mosque sports and activities with my friends. That's how it was. Is that something that you wanted to do it or is that something your parents kind of like push you to as like as, as sports and you know activities sports and activities <coughs> i've always been interested i've lo- always loved like watching living doing something that's just not sitting down I'm were a, you an active child very active would you say like you were kind of jumping out, uh, up and down i'd want to do something always um football cricket badminton like children's games whatever it is i'd always like be one of the first ones to be like let's, let's let's go out guys let's have some fun kind of thing so you're kind of the vibing guy you're always kind of out there like you just kind of looking for a motive i was looking for a motive but i wouldn't say i was like the leader of the group mm-hmm. i'd be like someone would like oh let's do something then I'd but then the someone would, else yeah, do so the organization and yeah, you just kind of jump in yeah, tag yeah. along yeah that's a nice nice kind of position to be in because you really don't want all the headache of calling someone and say hey come down you know and then doing all of that yeah. and then uh, it it's a lot of pressure you know organizing you know night outs and you know boys days out or whatever it's nice to just sometimes just follow the lead of someone else yeah but i would like help out i'd, I'd su- suggest certain stuff like someone says oh i'm doing do today i say oh let's play football or let's go out cinemas you know oh boys night like uh gaming mm-hmm. fifa and stuff like that nice nice How often do you, did you I mean at that time I'm sure like you know going to compete in Bangladesh that came probably very later down the line but what was your earliest experience of Bangladesh and when was it My earliest experience of Bangladesh is I can't even remember that's how early it was I'll be honest like I was I think 2 or 3 years old Okay I stayed in Bangladesh I believe for about 10 months at the time No way So I think um I can't remember much but I remember going there like my parents mentioned going there and then I got ill that l- delayed me coming back and What uh, kind of illness? 
that's how long uh, it's just i got ill like it was something to do with like my body was uh laying up with a lot of fluid in, inside it was was wow. it the, the, so so i was there for an extended period of time and then yeah it's so were long. you kind of stuck in hospital most of the time or were you allowed to go home and do other stuff i can't even remember that's how young i was okay but so I, like yeah it's you were probably what did you say three years old? Yeah, so it's like a very long time ago. Very vivid memories. And that's what other people said to you that happened to you. Yeah. But you don't remember. I don't remember, no. Just. Wow. And when, okay, when do you remember going to Bangladesh? As a, in, in terms of memory? Uh, when, well, when I, what, uh, when I was in year seven. Well, okay. That's, uh, before, year, about, even before that. 2011? No, 20 year five actually. Okay. Year five, year six, when I was about nine, nine mm-hmm. years old. So I remember going to where my dad was born and his like village or bari. Mm-hmm. I went to my mum's uh, place as well called Nana Bari. Mm-hmm. Um, so I remember all of that. Um, we're from Silet, so we, went, we have like a house in Silet as well. So at that time, it mm-hmm. was my my uncle was getting married, mm-hmm. so we were there for quite a while. Um, I think six months at that time. So still a long I see, time. I see, I see where this is coming from, like, you know, this uh, love for Bangladesh and uh, representation. I mean, you have been, because every time I met someone who actually genuinely loves Bangladesh, they have spent uh, extended a period of time in Bangladesh, maybe throughout their childhood. And, and uh, do you think it's important for other parents to kind of also take their children out there and, you know, really kind of explore the country and, you know, show them what, where they belong? I think, for my, this is my opinion, I think for... For us, it's important to know where our heritage lies. Mm-hmm. We need to know, like, where our fathers and mothers came from. Uh, it builds a nice relationship and love for the country. Because if you don't go, you never actually know how it is to live there. Mm-hmm. Even though it's always developing, mm-hmm. we we we'll, we need to be proud of our roots. In other words, um, and I'm very proud, like, where we're from. And, and I want to continue that legacy uh, for my children as well. But why do you care so much when the country itself doesn't care about itself so much? It's, uh, I, I, it's, uh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> it's, um, I'm sure the country does care about itself for various reasons. Uh, there's always setbacks and then they make progression and the setback. But I care about the country because I feel like Politics as a sportsman, aside, I, as, politics, a, as a sportsman, I feel like I need to put the country on the map. Show to the world, Bangladesh can do a lot in sports. They, we've got talented people, not only sports, influencers, business people. Every, even the, like, you know, in UK, Bangladeshi restaurant, Indian restaurants. Why do we have to call ourselves Indian restaurant? Why, why can't it be Bangladeshi, Bangladeshi restaurant? Cuisine? So like, we need to raise awareness for our country yeah. as well. Do you think we're quite submissive? As a, as a nation, like we kind of like downplay our abilities or, you know, that whole Indian restaurant thing. Maybe they did it as a tactic to kind of like just because India was famous at that time. Was it more of a PR thing or or is it because we're just like kind of like, you know, we're at, quite shy? At the time, I think um, we're talking probably one generation ahead of me. Yeah, it was more of a PR to get the people interested in and to help raise marketing awareness for the business. If you say... It's a Bangladeshi cuisine. P- people won't know mm. what Bangladeshi cuisine is. But if you say it's an Indian cuisine, they'll know straight away, yeah. oh, let's go to, let's have an Indian. Let's, yeah. You know. Yeah, so, let's have a curry. So, yeah. so that's how it is. Yeah. So I th- that's what I, I, I think. So you're kind of like, you know, you're, you're you, I mean, I, I strongly feel about Bangladesh as well because, not because, you know, I guess I've grown up there, but I, I mean, just looking at the, potential of the country politics aside putting everything aside but as a as a country it has so much to offer um so what got you into running i know you were quite active during your childhood years but when did you decide like okay running is what i'm going to do or was it an accidental kind of discovery well i've always been like i'd say i've had a an ability like to be fast or i've been quick like in other sports, you could it was easy to realize that was my main asset, but I never took sprinting seriously until like a later age, um, 20, 21 years old actually. Like in sp- sprinting terms, 
that's a late time to start, if that makes sense. But before that, I used to play football quite seriously. Well, by serious, I meant, I'd say, semi-professional level. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't really feel like it was I was getting anywhere. Um, I, I don't know if it's ability. I don't know if it was how how it's like I feel like the South Asians are like underrepresented I don't know if it was look ended I just made a switch um I had a friend who was in athletics uh they mentioned to me uh try out the sport I said to them I'm, I'm quite fast I, I know everyone says they're fast mm-hmm. and so on shoot uh so uh, her and her brother were like uh okay just have a try see how it goes um are they Bengalis, those people that you're referring a, to? A Pakistani friend. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so they, because I, I knew they were, do, they were doing athletics, the family. So mm-hmm. I asked, uh, they mentioned a coach to me. Uh, I inquired to the coach and I said, oh, I want to try out sprinting. I think um, I might be okay at it. And uh, since then, I've just hit the ground running, if you could, you could say. So when, w- what year was that in terms of, was it 2000 and what? Your uh, first kind of session with your say coach, I'd say it was two thousand and eleven or twelve. Okay, yeah. So, so that was that's quite a while ago. Quite a while ago. 2011? Yeah, 12, around 12, that time. Twelve years ago. Yeah. 12, yeah. Wow. So that's your first session, and here we are, twenty twenty three towards the end. Mashallah, a internationally celebrated sportsman. So, why 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 is sprinting over you know distant running? Like like what made you think like okay, sprinting is better than the long long range running? I'd say it's more to do with like um, prefer the fast and explosive activities. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really enjoy like long distance stuff. Like apart from sprinting and training, I try to like not walk around too much. Um, I feel like... Is that to save your energy or something? For I don't know if it's to save energy if I'm, if I'm just being lazy. <laughs> uh, that doesn't, doesn't sound like you, you know. Yeah, but no, it's like, I, I try to like do less when I'm not training, just to like conserve energy and just think about training and how it's going to impact my next session, etc. Mm-hmm. etc. Uh, but I'd say I like power sports in general. Boxing. You like to move, move quick. M- move quick. Yeah, exactly. Does that mean you're quite competitive in life in general? I think like you got. I think when you're trying to win championships, I mean, when you're trying to do well mm-hmm. at high level sport, you have to be competitive to succeed. Um, without that competitive edge or competitiveness, it's like a an extra motivation or or something that propels you to do better in performance. So if, if it's more about, not if you're not competitive, then it's more like a hobby. Mm. So tell me something. Obviously, you decided to do, you know, sprinting. And I'm sure you have expressed your vision of, say, maybe playing for a certain country or running for a certain country. What was the feedback like? Because... I want to know, like, you know, how you get that dose of competitiveness and that drive and that fire. Because for me, when people say no to me, like, oh, you ain't going to do that. You're not going to do that. You can't do it. That is like, for me, I say to people, say more. Because that drives me more. When people say to me, oh, mashallah, brother, you know, you've done so well. I don't want to hear. And in fact, that is worse for me. That's, That's kind of anti-progress for me because it makes my brain complacent and thinks yeah i am someone you know i don't need to move as fast so what like what was those kind of feedbacks and comments maybe in 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 close family friends environment was it of encouragement or was it otherwise i'd say apart from in south asians and bangladeshis apart from cricket we're not represented in many sports and you don't really see many people, Bangladeshi origins or South Asian mm-hmm. doing well in athletics or sprinting or power sports in general. There's, we, ha- we don't have a big representation. And I want to do like 
do my best to help break that stereotype. Um, also, like, not only as a British Asian, I want to inspire those to take up sports. Mm-hmm. It's not something that we're engineered towards by our parents in the past. It was more about education and having that discipline there. Yeah. And then other stuff, if other stuff were allowed even. Mm. So it's a, I'd say it's a different dimension we can take to succeed in. Um, especially like in athletics, I, th- I believe like there's so much raw talent, or so much that we as a uh, South Asian or Bangladeshis can achieve. Uh, it's just not t- been tapped into or we've not really given the direction or the programming or whatever it might be. Co- so why is it this way? I mean, I understand when our, I guess, forefathers and, you know, maybe parents migrated to this country, they had a need to fulfill. They couldn't take a risk, you know, opening up this or retail business or whatever business. They needed a guaranteed income so they can send it back home and, you know, support the family. Do you think it's time, it's about time where our kind of new parents started kind of diversifying and, you know, pushing their children towards you know, I guess, diverse fields. I think, like, you're right. Like, I, I don't think our parents had much option but to work. They didn't have much time. They had to send money to Bangladesh. They had to also look after their families over there as well as here. Yeah. So I don't blame them for having that sort of mindset towards their kids. But they also sh- should see that it's a way that someone can prosper in life. Like if they enjoy something like a sport or activity or I don't know, like it doesn't need to be sports, it could be anything. And they're quite successful successful at it or they're doing well. Let them try it out, see how far they can get. Of course, education is important. Everyone needs, well, I, in my opinion, it, it kind of uh, opens up opportunities in the future. It gives you discipline, uh, how you behave with the people, the social interaction from education when you're, in, when you're in a classroom. It's important, but at the same time, having an active lifestyle is, is, is equally important. Equally important, yeah. Um, so, any any negative um, f- any ne- negative comments that you've kind of like that stuck with you, and you maybe said to them, you know what, one day, and I'll prove it. Were there any negative comments? There's not. I wouldn't say there's as negative comments, but more like, uh, it's more, you've been doing it for quite a while. Where, is, you, where, where, where is the where results? Is the where results? are the results? What are the results? You're investing so much money into it, so much time into it. Maybe you can do something else and do better. I've had people say stuff like that. and It's not nice, obviously, but I see in a way like it's an opportunity like to keep going, to keep going, to overshadow my criticism and become stronger in sports like there's so much setbacks and you just got to deal with it you got to mentally bounce back and that's how you become a better person and a better athlete you gotta take the negative feedbacks and be a better person nice negative use negative to fuel you yeah um so in terms of your i guess your contribution from from your parents you know what was the encouragement like you know because obviously you, I'm sure they've had aspirations. My son's gonna become this and that accountant, and you know have a good job in maybe one of the big fours. Um, what was the reaction when you told them, "Yeah, I'm gonna go into running"? To be honest, to be fair, my parents have always been supportive, supportive of what I wanted to do. Always, um, they didn't know how well the sprinting would go. Um, it's gone well, Alhamdulillah. Um, I didn't even know. I just wanted to do the best I can. Um, fulfill my potential um, but they did want me to do well in academic schools university try to get a good graduate job and so and so they've always pushed me towards that side as well so but they they've never hindered me in terms of don't sacrifice your education for sport they've always said to me or they've always displayed to me like they want me to do what I'm happy doing as well so that's been beneficial for me, from my experience. Mm, interesting. 
So, I mean, were you kind of, do you guys have more siblings or, or were you the only si- child in the family or how does it work? I've got two younger sisters. Uh, I'm the eldest brother. They they don't do sports. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do, like, I, obviously I do sport. Uh, what, what's their th- uh, feedback? Like, Borobai, you know, or, older, or eldest brother, you know, doing, doing sports. What do they say? Uh, well, whatever I do in sports or even if it's not an amazing achievement, from what I perceive, they'll, they'll be like, oh, wow, that's amazing. You know, like, they're just happy. Encouraging, encouraging you, cheering you, you along. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Amazing. Now, obviously, you told Business Standard that you were late when you started athletics, 19. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, how did you catch up? Like, how did you close that gap? I guess just trying to, as well as a person of sprints, uh, I'm a student of the sport as well. I try to evaluate myself. I try to see what ways I can be a better athlete uh, mentally, physically, sprint in terms, um, socially, like look at the mechanics of sprinting. Um, how do other sprint, like elite, elite sprinters, how do they conduct themselves on and off the track? It wasn't an overnight kind of thing. I'll, all of a sudden I've become a talented sprinter. Um, I was, I had the talent, but I had to nurture it. Um, finding the right support system mm-hmm. around me, physiotherapy, coaching, and all that sort of has. So, how much of it is luck and how much of it is talent? Where is that balance? Because I'm sure you can train I, I don't as, think as hard. I don't think it's luck at all. I believe there's talent, but you have to work on the talent. You can't just be talented and just not work hard for it because then there's no foundation or no background in what you're trying to achieve. Uh, so it does take a lot of your life, uh, six hours a day training, like then work, then, you know, wow. it's so much to like comprehend and, you know, it's, it's not easy being a sprinter. Uh, people probably see, Nine, nine to ten seconds in a hundred meters and like oh yeah that was easy like that, you could have done that <laughs> yeah but and people probably hundred meters oh it's just running fast mm-hmm. that, but there's so much that goes into it injury prevention um technical aspects wow it sounds like formula yeah. one now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so like when you ch- break everything down uh it is quite a lot to get hold on okay imagine I come to you now in run by. I want to be what you, what you do. I want to do what you do. Where do I start? Am I too late? Am I, I'm 37. So <laughs> are you going to write me off saying, no, nah, mate, you're, you, <laughs> you can't do I would, it? I wouldn't write you off, but I say time is against you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like you're doing something that you might enjoy. Um, you can't, you have, you've got to start somewhere, I guess. Yeah. So where do I start now? Like imagine, uh, okay, I want, I'm dead kind of adamant. I want to do it. Where, how would you kind of guide me through? What, what's that process? You start by finding a local club or a track and field uh, facility. Um, try to reach the right people like who have got a bit of knowledge or more experience than yourself mm-hmm. in, say, athletics or running or... Imagine you're field. that guy to me. Oh, like, yeah. You're, you're my mentor. Mentor, tell me, where do I go? I'd say, first of all, make some time. Mm-hmm. How but much time are we talking Depends what how how successful you want to be or how much. Like I want to be a winner. I don't want to be like you know. It's someone who just takes the guys in the behind the queue or something. No, I want to be the winner. Like you got you got like mm. of course like there's there's an element of like you have to train hard. You have to train four or five times a week. You have to be in the track in the gym. Uh, you have to also get the therapy in. You have to make sure you're, you're mentally prepared and disciplined for what's to come. And from my experience, what I, I can probably give you some sort of track tapes or some speed sessions or some gym and conditioning stuff. I can do that. I can even give you some technical sessions mm-hmm. as much as I, although I get coached mm-hmm. for my technical stuff, mm-hmm. I can give what I know from my experience mm-hmm. to you to make you a better person, a better athlete. Mm. So that's... Can I not just go on in the park and just start running fast? I mean, isn't that going to do the trick? It will do the trick for, for like one or two weeks. But then you'll kind of, if you don't know what you're trying to improve on, how are you going to improve on it? Mm. So I guess, um, yeah, so you need that coach. You need that mentor who will kind of just, 
Yeah. It's like uh, having a PT, right? You know, you don't understand certain things or maybe you think you know certain things, but you actually don't. Yeah. And then they, you know, so I, I have a PT because I, before I lost, started losing weight, I was kind of helpless. I had a situation where I met this guy, he's a PT and he had a mashallah, very good physique. And, you know, I said to him, look, my belly, what do I do? You know, but I still don't, I still want to have my donut kebab though. Like that's the condition. He goes, yeah, we, we'll have to have a chat. <laughs> but now that I train on my own, I've trained with him for about two years. It's like all these reminders, you know, it's constant rep repetition. Shafiq, do this, Shafiq, do this, Shafiq. It's like at that time, you're like, oh man, like now it's like those voices replay in my head when I'm training on my own. Is that similar with, with, with your stuff, with, with running? That sometimes with running, you might think, You've aced the se session. You might think, oh, I'm, I look good in running. Oh, I ran really fast that day. But th that people have coaches for a reason. Coaches, I. So they they're like kind of a mirror to say like, no, you haven't actually yeah. run fast. You haven't done so well. Yeah, yeah, the, this bit you can improve on. This is not uh, efficient enough. They break it down to like chain to get together a better and more efficient run. If that makes sense. Wow. So how do I avoid shin splints or, or, or the knee pain? Because every time I run fast here, yeah, so for about three days in a row, I get this fear coming in my head. Like, oh my God, my, um, my knee is going to start wearing out now and I should stop for a bit and, you know, start all over again, maybe in a few weeks time. Is that true? Or does our knee kind of recreate or some chemicals or something? You have to get the conditioning in. You have to strengthen your knees your muscles around it, stretch your calves, strengthen your calves. There's so much you have to do for injury prevention um, to build a foundation so you can actually run fast or do active, high, high demanding activities. Um, that's what I would say. Hey guys, I hope you have been enjoying today's episode. If you have been enjoying, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because your subscription goes a long way. At the time of this recording today, we are just over 2,000 subscribers and our next goal is 5,000 subscribers. And I know I can count on you to help us get there. So, okay, now imagine you're having a competition, you know, somewhere, M maybe not on, on a world stage. But you want to win just before, you know, when you're kind of uh, bending down or, or kneeling or whatever that position is. What's going through your mind like at that exact second? You know, what? I've had so many different thoughts when I've been on like block start position is weird ones like oh, my legs are not straight or oh, I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> am I, I did. I, what sh sh should I what should I do? Like, uh, am, am I comfortable enough in the block? Or did I have the right breakfast? You know, like, these are things that we learn to, like, filter out. Mm. Are these, like, kind of fear elements that trying to, like, kind of put you down? Like, you know, you know, like, I feel like fear is much stronger than positive vibes. And it's always kind of like, you know, anti, anti-positivity. It's weird sometimes, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever come across this situation. Like, the less you try to think about it, Think about it more. You're like, yeah, oh, I'm thinking yeah, about it now. I try yeah. not to think about it. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm thinking that that happens. Yeah. So just have, to, I think it's more to be how you like, like a, you have to stay calm. Um, make sure you don't, you just focus on what you want to do in the starting position. Like, I focus on myself, like getting out hard, hitting the ground really powerfully, move my arms. That's, the kind of things you want to focus on rather than even an empty mind sometimes something might creep in yeah so wow so do you do bismillah and stuff like you know, oh, that's before i go into like the, yeah like smash this no, I, well i said bismillah i said allah please uh, like uh, allow me to be successful in the race come out injury free perform well and just so injury is a big kind of big a fear factor while before that rate but like yeah your body has to be like ready to compete if it's not ready to compete then then you're gonna get hurt at some point whether it's if it's not in that race it might be another race mm -hmm. so we have to withstand that fatigue and uh, have a good foundation behind us 
what just more to do with like help we pray uh, help us uh perform and what we've been practicing in and training just make sure we get out in a competitive way on the track and in the competition amazing so how strong is our body like in one sense it's very fragile and then in other senses like you do all this stuff powerful stuff many people do gym heavy weight lifting you know how is how strong is our body we are the humans we have limitations of course but we can build ourselves to gain strength and be powerful and be strong um mm-hmm. like different sports require different elements some sports require more agility and more movement and flexibility mm-hmm. um other sports might be more like about just raw strength and power um it depends what kind of strength you're talking about how do you so do you have to get sponsorship to to be an athlete to kind of compete on a world stage do you have to get someone to sponsor you or do you kind of it helps it helps having a sponsor how does it help in what way like w- if i don't want to be an accountant then it'll help okay <laughs> so someone has to fund it basically basically uh, of course like you have that time to recover after training mentally mm. rest your body uh physically rest your body gotcha. uh, things like that and then time itself is a uh, quite a valuable mm-hmm. thing in life um how we use it determines what we can achieve i, I guess okay so <laughs> Who do you look up to most in in your field? Who is that icon like that inspires you on a daily basis and you know what I want to be like him or I want to be better than him? Of course in track and field it's a uh, Usain Bolt. Everyone's st- everyone wants to be as successful as him. We all have aspirations to be on that level. He's a very ta- obviously is is a freak of an athlete and he's achieved so much. Um I say a sprinter yeah it's definitely got to be him. Usain Bolt. Yeah. Do you think him being tall helps? I feel like him being tall helps in certain aspects of the race. Yes. Um but everyone uses their own body structure or physique mm. in different ways. Some people who are shorter than him, they might have a more explosive start and they might be able to hit the ground running at a faster rate. Um whereas him as soon as it hits his rate or stride rate then he's able to b- keep that momentum going better than other people so it's how you use your weaknesses and advantages that cuz i feel like when i'm working with tall people i always fall behind <laughs> because they're like walking like you know they they kind of skewed so kind of bigger <laughs> and i'm like you know <laughs> short guy trying to catch up with him <laughs> um so do you think one day we will uh, see imran imran ur rahman um as as Usain Bolt or or some somewhere along those lines I just want to be the best as I can um take each day mm-hmm. as it comes uh every session I do I want to keep on building on it every championship I go to I want to do better than what, the one before and everyone has the sights on championship gold medals etc and if I can strive myself towards that then of course definitely So is it a good business model though as uh, being an athletic I'm sure like there has to be some kind of it needs to make financial sense as well depends how good you are I guess Ath- athletics itself is not the best funded sport when you compare it to like football cricket boxing only the top ones really make good money mm and it also depends on which country you're from as well which country is like valuable? i mean like uh, i mean like if there is if there's a country that doesn't really support or has like athletics as the main sport then there's going to be less funding and less support, support towards so it so i guess hype matters hype, and yeah. the backing of a country and how much they market it matters yeah nice so when you visit bangladesh how how do you get treated are you kind of you know <laughs> put on a pedestal when you know everyone's kind of like you know the the treatment nice uh they very welcome in uh i'm kind of a role model to some people now okay uh, so i have to behave in a certain way which reflects who i am as a person i try to be genuine as possible um 
But yeah, it's, it's it does get it, it does feel a bit unusual at times because I'm not a person who like enjoys having too much limelight on them on themselves kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, I like I'm, I appreciate it, like all the support that I get from Bangladesh and even everyone that supports me really. Nice. So now, before I get to the meeting of the Prime Minister of Bangladesh as a result of your amazing, amazing achievement, um, I was going through your social media, <laughs> as I would, obviously, because I want to interview you. I noticed, obviously, you are married to someone of yeah. Pakistani origin. Yeah. Now... Obviously, Bangladesh is quite... The stance on Pakistan is very, very hard. I know you said um, also kind of your wife met the prime minister. Was she aware that she was Pakistani? Yeah, she was aware. Uh, like, once I got the success, uh, more people were more aware, aware of... Welcoming. Like, vul- no, they were aware of, like, my private life more, if that makes sense. I don't mm. know how, they just... yeah. They drove into where I'm from, who I'm married to, what do I do on a in your, part, in your uh, own time, the yeah. whole time. So, and I wasn't ashamed anyway. I I, I said I'm married when someone I said I'm married. My wife's from uh, UK. She's pa- she's of Pakistani heritage, and they were fine with it. But obviously, is get- it because you grew up in Sheffield that kind of combination marriage happened uh, with obviously? with someone from Pakistani origin. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I'm just curious. No, it's... I don't know. It just... It just kind of happened and when you got married, like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm not going to marry you because you're Pakistani or I'm not going to marry you. I'm, I'm looking for a Bangladeshi wife. It's... That's how it is. How <laughs> is it? How is it life like? How is life? Because obviously... I'm married to Bangladeshi and, you know, we've got some commonality, you know, in terms of our kind of culture, understanding, how we do things. How is it in your case? Like, you know, how do you make it work? Of course, it's not. I wouldn't say it's like. It's very similar, but there are some differences, but I reckon there's more similarities than differences. Mm. And it helps that we're both from UK, UK and we're British. Because we know how to operate in this. Yeah, I mean, that's a kind of a, a layer of kind of similarities, I suppose. Yeah, but I'd say it would be more difficult and the compatibility would be different if someone was just fresh off the boat from Bangladesh and someone from Pakistan, Pakistan just, they just got married to each other. Okay. I think that would be... So you have that mutual understanding, I guess, growing up in a, in a particular city or particular country. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So when you go to, I don't know, functions... Or when she comes to your functions, like does she feel left out, or or, or do you feel left out? Well, we accommodate each other quite well, and we both enjoy it as well. She'll get involved in the Bangladeshi tradition. I'll have to obviously. <laughs> obviously, yeah. you have to reciprocate. It, it, I'll do, <laughs> and I'll just do the traditions they have. Just like we're okay with it. Like it's fun as well at the same time. Amazing, amazing, fantastic. That's uh, that's very interesting. So, what's your what's what's a day like in in your in your life, a normal day? A normal day. So, obviously, everyone wakes up. Um, um, having breakfast. What do you think about when you wake up? Like, the first thought that comes in your mind? Because when I switch on, business. That's what comes into my mind. First of all, I have um, making sure my daughter's in nursery before I start training. <laughs> <laughs> so, if I, the, the more she gets delayed, I'd get delayed. And less <laughs> time in my training, that's because I work as well. So, I have mm. to... There's like a set timetable, like I'll wake up, um, I'll uh, eat my breakfast and um, then uh, I'll take it to the nursery. After nursery, I'll go to a track. After track, I'll go to work. After work. Dip- Do you have to eat breakfast before you go to the track? Do you ha- ha- or or if you don't, what, what happens if you don't? I, if, if I'm short on time, I'll have something really small, like a breakfast bar or and a banana kind of thing. Um but a lot of people say you shouldn't have breakfast bars and stuff like that because of high of sugars, etc., cetera, et cetera, And I'm told, like, also, like, you shouldn't work out or do any intense training with that with an empty belly because it burns muscle or something as well. A lot of research is say- saying now that you can do training 
on an empty stomach. I like the sound of that because I because would like to continue doing my routine. We have energy systems and we have we store our energy in like our glycogen source which is from the carbs we get and then we also have fats mm-hmm. from like egg yolks and peanuts, mm-hmm. avocados, butters, olive oils, etc. Mm-hmm. Um their reserves in our body, they don't just disappear when we go to sleep and we don't eat breakfast. They're still there and we can tap into that and use it if we if we train an empty stomach and then you would lose weight. Mm-hmm. As long as you keep yourself hydrated and the electrolyte levels are right, then yeah, you can, it's fine sometimes. Not all the time. Not all the time because, uh, you know, you don't want to be at a level where you're like losing too much mm-hmm. weight and you don't have, you're using too much of the energy storage that you've conserved. And sometimes we do feel hungry in the morning. Yeah, we can't, yeah. It's difficult to operate. I see you. Okay, we're coming to the, obviously, end of our show. Um, and there's so many questions that I have um, that I want to really get through because I find it really fascinating how our body works and how, subhanAllah, looking at it from a miracle point of view and how Allah created us, it is so, so complex. And how we, how it self-heals, how it repairs. There is nothing else in this world that just repairs itself apart from a, I guess, human or, or animal body. When you are kind of doing all these workouts, do you ever get scared like, oh my God, something's going to go wrong? Yeah, <laughs> I, I do. Like when I'm lifting heavy, I'm thinking like, oh, what if something gives way or what if I got spasm or what if I'm doing a heavy squat and at the bottom, I'm, my body just, I, I, it gives up itself <laughs> like, and my back goes backwards and oh something. Man. You know, these things, they can happen. That's why uh, we train in a way where we're prepared for these heavy lifts or say when I'm running, it can be running so fast. Like a muscle might just rip because that's the intensity we're running at. So these are things that we, it's, it's all, me- it's a mental thing as well. Yeah. If you're mentally strong, it helps with your f- physical progress, I guess. Can you cut through pain? Like when you know your knee is telling you like, uh, it's not really like, you, you don't want to do it, but your yeah. brain is saying, I just want to, yeah, you can't. I reckon you can't say. I think you. I'd say so. If you're actually injured and hurt, then you won't be able. Maybe to, not. Right? But yeah. if there's pain and you know you can overcome it, your brain brain sends that stimulus stimulus to the, the area of the where where the pain is. Wow, and it's telling that is you don't do this. Crazy. But if you're strong and you like experience like this sort of pain before and you uh, overcome it, then you can use it to. Ah, oh, hang on, I've done it before. I can overcome this. I can push myself to the limit. Mm, wow. So, how much speed do you develop? Did you ever measure, like, you know, okay, you know how a car goes, like, you know, one mile, two miles, three, like, what's the maximum speed do you achieve in that 100 meter run? I'm not 100% sure, but people have said between top speed, yeah, about, I might be wrong, about 27 to 30 miles per hour. That is mad. Like, seriously. Yeah. And how many to keep that top speed? You probably won't keep it for long, but that's you can't reach it. Mm. Then it might plateau off. Or and how many minutes? Okay, I'm so poor with with athletics. How many minutes is that run, or how many seconds is that? Hundred say meter? like hundred meters. Mm. The world record is done in nine point five eight seconds. seconds. Hundred meters in nine point five. So you're running ten. You're covering ten meters under one second. That is crazy, man. <laughs> that is some real like strength and power that is mad so tell us about your kind of um diet uh do you like curry rice and curry and how much do you eat rice and curry i or is it, I try to avoid or is it routine or is it routine now what, what uh, is it? <laughs> when i go to my in laws they they know what i like now so they make me actually rice, rice and curry. yeah, they, yeah. They know that no but to be fair like I don't even try to have too much curry anyway because I know that although it does taste nice, I know like the effects from it like it make me bloated. Mm-hmm. Um, my body won't be able to metabolize it in a in a way which would help me train or perform the next coming days. Mm-hmm. So I try to oh, I try to avoid like curries in general. I try to stick to like the healthy options like grilled stuff or minimum sauce. Uh, well, as long as it's tasty as well, yeah, I don't yeah. mind. Variation is important. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 
Yeah, I like to spice things up, man. Not yeah, like I love my spices. Yeah, bro. yeah. I can't have anything without spices. Like when my wife makes me grilled chicken, I like kind of like yeah, a bit of chili and a bit of like you know this and that. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. But curry, I do realize, you know, when you have meat curry and you know the fully oily curry, man, like it, it affects you big time. And I think it does affect you. And I feel I feel like when I have it now, it affects me even more because my body's not being channeled towards a different type of diet. It feels like foreign in the body sometimes. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, and I yeah, feel yeah. like. I'm, Again, heartburns and yeah. not burping properly and yeah. all sorts. Yeah, quite wow. Do you smoke shisha? No. Why? I feel, uh, I is feel it because it's haram or is it because for body it's not good? I've heard like um, mixed stuff whether it's, it's haram or halal. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to like say yes. Yeah, so you don't go on that basis. On that basis, like because I don't have the knowledge. Mm enough knowledge to the scholars know okay. more um but i try to avoid as much as i can because i know how it can affect the airways and the oxygen levels Has, in the have body. you felt felt it in in person like you know where you might have maybe had a few puffs and then next time you went for a run and it's like it's not good for you i haven't felt it but i know the science behind it like um you're clogging up your airways you could say that, and then less red blood cells are being transported in your body wow. to give oxygenated blood. Mad, uh, mad. That is crazy. Okay, I guess it's time to rethink, you know, <laughs> my uh, standpoint. I mean, I don't, I don't have it. Um, I'm not a, an addict, but sometimes, you know, it's just as a social kind of mm. thing. You know, we we do it, but I guess I don't encourage it. I encourage anyone to do it, but it's just a personal just, thing. Yeah. But I do feel like every time I had a shisha in between a run man but it's like my heart is about to explode on the next <laughs> one it's like it, it, it really makes an impact it's about just having to work more than it should be working wow like this the is demands are higher wow that is crazy what would be that one advice that you could give if you could give to anyone that's watching from the from our audience what would be that one advice that you would give like if you have a passion or love for something you should always give it a go like you never know what it could lead to. Don't try to. Don't have regrets later on in life. Saying oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. It's too late now. Um, you obviously, obviously, Allah guides us, but you also can determine your own future. The paths you take. Do you read any books? Not too much. I'll be honest. I'm more. <laughs> I'm. I'm more of someone who observes and watches. Do you listen to any books, any 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 books that has maybe helped you in in terms of your thinking and your I, discipline? I do. Well, I listen to like not motivational stuff, but like psychological ways of uh, enhancing how you think in sports, how to prepare for like comp- competitions, how to overcome negative feedback, how to like come back for feedback uh, setback. Sorry, so I do listen to like certain clips here and there from youtube or and i, I do like you know stuff like, like uh, what do you call it uh, autobiographies and on tv mm. like document docuseries or documentary a lot of sports people or influential people how they've built themselves to be what they've become mm-hmm. what was that moment like now before i i, I want to move to the quick fire questions because i've got some really interesting questions and i hope you will answer like you know with one or two words as much um, as as few words as possible basically but yeah. before that you met the prime minister of bangladesh i mean i would love to one day meet me meet, meet the prime minister of bangladesh i don't have any affiliation with any political parties bnp or Aum League or jamati or whatever personally as a leader i feel like wow like you know a female person generally people think okay females can't do this or do that but again i don't have any views on that front she's a woman mm. and majority of her cabinet are male dominated yeah. and how she does it is, is faci- i find it quite fascinating and i would love to meet her one day and maybe we interview her on a side by side podcast as well but what was that presence like in 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 the presence of a prime minister? Was there an energy that you were feeling like you know when you're around high performance people, leaders, you feel that positivity? I feel like I felt like there was an energy actually. There was some sort of little aura that like, oh, things are getting a bit serious now. I'm going to meet the prime minister, but let me just be as comfortable as possible and 
not make an embarrassment of myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I, I was confident in myself because she wanted to see me because I did well in the sport. Amazing. So, that so, was, that's so, so does that make it like... That makes mu- you quite comfortable as well. As like. much as I wanted to see her, she wanted to see me as well to congratulate me, I guess. So like, that helped. Um, of course, my wife was there. Like you said, the Pakistani thing and, the, you know... Uh, yeah, the, uh, man, that must have been quite she, <laughs> But she was she was fine. She was uh, very welcoming. We had a good chat with her. Um, she held my daughter. You know, it was nice, nice vibes. Amazing, amazing. Honestly, like, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know how, what it feels like to meet, meet a prime minister of a country and especially of a country of 166 million people. And that's excluding all the expats that live all uh, around yeah. the world. So, wow, congratulations. And, and, you. and, you know, I'm sure... She's following your journey and I'm sure she's kind of very impressed and she will want to you to keep representing the country. It looks like she does care about the image of the country and when someone is representing it well. I think she does. I think she because she's um also a sports enthusiast herself. Um her younger brother was very interested in sports. He was the founder of the first football team in Bangladesh. So like they're a sporting family in general. So they do want Bangladesh to do well in sports in general. Um, which obviously helps not only bring awareness to the world uh, from a... She's like female uh, a prime minister, so people are like, oh, mm. how is a female prime minister, prime minister been in power for so long and so and so? Um, but she does try to do good for the country, I guess. Um, some people might see it as negative. Yeah. It happens with everything. Um, you have your fans and you have... Yep, let's see. Let's uh, let's hope um, it goes well for her in the next, um, I guess, election, which is around the corner. Which is what? What on sixth of January 6th or seventh of January? Yeah. I think, yeah. Well, it's gonna be crazy. Now, are you gonna move to Bangladesh eventually to live, or or, or is that? I don't think it'd be suitable f- for my family. Okay. Like, cause they've grown up here, they'll find the adjustment quite hard. But we'll go visit regularly okay. and we'll enjoy the time. So Sheffield there. is going to remain home? Whether it's going to be Sheffield or whether it's going to be somewhere else, I don't know. Uh, nice. So are there any uh, aspirational brands that you'd like to s- be sponsored by? Like, okay, you know, if I could get sponsorship from this one, that, that kind of goes in line with what I what my aspirations are. Um, Sports sports giant brands. Yeah. Your Nikes, your Adidas, your Pumas. Okay. You know... What's your favorite out of all them, all of them brands? Which one? I prefer Nike. Okay. Uh, because I've used I use majority of the gears and the running spikes and the running shoes, and I feel like. I feel like it helps me. Nice. Today, what was your last meal? Like before before this podcast, what did you eat? I had a, actually I had. Spicy chicken. And rice, brown rice with carrots and broccoli. I hate broccoli. But, <laughs> but you just have to kind I of shove it, it down uh, your throat. I had a protein bar and a protein shake and some fruits. Nice. If you could pick one place in this world, where would you where would you settle? Without, where money is an, ad, an object, where logistics of family is an, uh, an object, where would you pick? I'd actually pick Sheffield because I was born there and you know what, my family's there mm-hmm. and you know, like I got, I'm used to it. Like if I've achieved everything that I wanted to achieve in So life, you really like Sheffield? I'd come back to Sheffield eventually at one point. Even if I go somewhere for like long periods of time and I've, I, for some reason or another, I'd probably end up coming back to Sheffield. But yeah, you need to work on your food though in Sheffield. Like, come on, like everything closes at 10 o'clock, you know? Someone's someone's gotta do something. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're improving. We're improving slowly. Like we need the influence from uh, London people. I was I, guess, I was Manchester there uh, for about eight days, and I was like, okay, I need to finish this gym quickly before before everything shuts. You're right. A lot of people do complain. <laughs> yeah. you're, not, you're not the only one. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, if you had, if money wasn't an object, what would be that one thing that you would buy? That you really want. Oh. I, I don't know. I know like, you're too humble. Like you're, you're, humble, you're quite, no, you, you don't like, seem to be materialistic, but it's nice to have nice things, you know. What would be that one thing that you would want? I'll, look, I'll, I'd want luxury cars, 
nice house. What's the favorite stuff. car? You mentioned the car first. What would be your go-to car? Like, okay, this is my pinnacle. This is the kind of my optimum kind of success level. And I can, I'm going to buy a car. Look, look, I've got this here on my screensaver. It's an SF90. It's a reminder that I need to get this car. You, inshallah, you will. Inshallah, inshallah. If and you I'm haven't, then you're hiding it from me. <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Uh, no, um, like a supercar, like a, something in, like an Aventador. More of a Lamborghini, a Lamborghini fan, yeah? Lamborghini fan, yeah. Nice one, nice one. Look, thank you for taking the time out of your extremely busy schedule. I know um, you're in London for a couple of days and we somehow managed to kind of like, you know, pin you down and, you know, secure a slot. I hope you have enjoyed our conversation and I know our viewers will definitely appreciate and I'm sure there will be a lot of takeaways from your story and from your um, journey as a sports person. I, as a Bangladeshi, I was so inspired when I saw these Facebook posts and, you know, news articles going around. I was so gassed. So I started looking for you and then, alhamdulillah, finally we get to meet. Um, we do have a small gift. As a token of appreciation, on behalf of, behalf of Side by Side and Sunamask, it's a mystery gift. I don't know what's in it, but I hope you will enjoy Th it. Thank you very much and I appreciate you having me on your show or share the podcast, etc. Um, my aim is just like help others do well in what they want to achieve, uh, especially our underrepresented uh, Bangladeshis in uh, sports. I want to pave way or inspire the next generation. Their Inshallah. success, if they can be successful, I'd say it's successful myself if I've been able to help them as well. Amazing. Fantastic. What a what a honorable wish and thought. And, and may Allah preserve your health and may Allah kind of grant you a long life so you can continue to inspire us all and keep repre representing our country. Inshallah. You're welcome. Jazakallah. And that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode with Imran Rahman, a very, very inspiring individual. I have been meaning to have him on the show. I have waited a very long time and finally we have managed to get him onto the show. Once again, I hope you have enjoyed the show. If you have, please don't forget to share with family and friends and hit that subscribe button. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi